Read the book of Acts chapter 2. There's new calendars out in the front for August. Grab one before you leave. That way you've got, you know what's happening in your church. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 2, very familiar portion of scripture, but it's one that has been uh, spinning within my mind for a few weeks now, and, and now it's spun. <laughs> so Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse number 39, where the Bible says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saving, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And they continued. Jesus, we thank you today. We ask you, Lord, to allow the Holy Ghost to minister to us, help our ears to hear and our hearts to receive what it is that you have for us today. We're very thankful, God, for this opportunity to have be able to be here knowing that your presence is here. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. This afternoon... I want to preach to you a self-saving message. In other words, if in your life and in your walk with God, you, you heed such a message, thought like this, that though the trials and the tests of life will come and go, it will be your feet that not only will be set and settled, but they will remain firmly planted on solid ground. For the next while, I want to preach to you a message titled, Stay Connected. Stay Connected. The year was 1837 when a man named Samuel Morse first demonstrated the Morse system. And in 1843, being financially backed by Congress, Samuel Morse went on to build the telegraph system. And he did that from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore using underground wire along the railroad tracks. It was then on May the 24th of 1844 that the first message was sent, What hath God wrought? What hath God wrought? Words, I believe, that the people of that day had no idea how God was helping them back there and us continue on to today to not only learn how to link with but to be able to unite with one another in ways that maybe back then they had never been possible before. From there in the year of 1849 a man by the name of Antonio Musi invented the first basic phone and in 1876 a man whose name became a household name Alexander Graham Bell had won the first US patent for the device that we know as the telephone now prior to such times people's communication was very limited some of the methods of communication were smoke signals beacon fires message relays, carrier pigeons, called something called a semaphore system. That was using of waving of flags. They'll do that in the Navy. And early settlements also began to use what was called a newly formed postal route. In all of this history of communication, my purpose in sharing this with you is for you to hopefully to understand if you didn't already know how that some of the basic attempts that people had made in their desire to be able to connect with one another. You think about connecting. We can talk and we can hear and, and we can listen and there's ways that people can communicate. They wave their hands and, and you even get into the time where uh, blind people, they, they would uh, use their braille to be able to uh, make words and deaf people would use sign language to be able to connect and throughout history people have done something anything that they knew what they could do in order for them to connect and what it, you'll discover in reading about such history is no matter how primitive or basic thousands of years people have sought to and 
and have invented and even created their means of communicating with one another. For many, the ability to connect was their life source, their way to stay connected with those who in their lives mattered most. Now, I know that maybe some of you ladies and even probably some of us men here today uh, in our cooking procedures probably were trying to send smoke signals and it didn't mean it to get to the fire department. And you probably definitely didn't want to burn down your house. And, and, and you know what? I've never sent off a carrier pigeon, but we have ways to connect. I guess what I'm saying to you this afternoon, again, is receiving a letter in the mail Connecting with a loved one by whatever means that was available in some cases. It meant more to a person than that what I would dare say to be of great wealth. I just want to hear your voice. I just want to see you. I want to hear the words, I love you. I want to see your smile upon your face. That what really means something to me. It makes my day. It makes me feel loved. It makes me feel Connected. So communicating and staying connected. Communicating and staying connected. Now, please, I want you to hear what I'm saying. Staying connected or being able to connect was a way to interact with, to exchange heartfelt thoughts or words. Making contact became the way that people of all backgrounds found their way or their, they found their solace, their comfort, their consolation in the fact that they were not alone not alone somebody would somebody just talk to me would somebody smile would somebody just say something i I don't want to feel alone i don't want to be alone in the war times receiving a letter from a loved one no doubt left them with a hope and a strength and wanting to carry on in the prison system receiving communication from the outside world often kept one's sanity from being lost and overall staying connected and concerns to each and every one of us is an element in this life that has and carries within it benefits you ever shaken somebody's hand and and you know they're just doing their duty and they shook your hand you ever ever shook a hand and you felt something have you ever had somebody smile at you and and it spoke to you It, it made you feel like kinship or a friend and and have you ever been in the company of others where you know you were kind of sitting off to the side and they turned around and they made every attempt to draw you into that conversation to help you to feel that you were a part of what was going on and from the history of the past on we go to the connection highway cell phones ipods ipads messenger twitter facebook and the list could go on and on all of what is used for the purpose of people staying connected now some of those uh, devices and some of those means i have no use for and no time for i'm just too busy but you know when you want to connect with your loved one and they, and they live thousands of miles away or they're, they're just unable to maybe to get to you receiving a quick little text and, and I don't really know what a Mimi is so I won't say you'll get a Mimi maybe it's meant for something else it's not you, you, it's called a Mimi but anyhow, <laughs> receiving things from people it, it just is that something that you get a smile uh, sometimes, and I won't get in trouble for this because you know she's here today but sometimes at the end of a message I'll, I'll just put a little heart at the end of it and sometimes with my own confusion of being a man and and uh, not getting the, the communication properly I'll put a head upside down or this little guy with poked out eyes and 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 that way maybe she won't be mad at me but at least she'll think that I'm funny and at the end of that conversation she'll know that you know she is loved but I believe this afternoon there comes an even greater point and a greater purpose beyond all of what I've shared with you. See, in the realm of staying connected while living and seeking to live our lives for God, no matter if it is you who is just coming into the church or maybe having embarked upon this road in Christ, or it's you that for any number of years has been walking this walk and living your life for God, I dare say to you today that staying connected with one another, staying connected with God in prayer through the reading of the Word of God and faithfully being one to attend the church 
uh, for the purpose of being strengthened, encouraged, and through the preaching of the word of God for the purpose also of fellowship and connecting with your brothers and sisters in Christ. See, this remains to be vital to your growth and to your survival as a child of God. This is vital. It's not just, uh, well, something I should do. It's vital. It's necessary. I should meet with those, you know, that believe what I believe and, and would open their Bibles. We go to work, uh, go to our workplaces and all kinds of different um, <coughs> occupations and you'll find people that are adverse they'll talk about everything but and and you bring up God and <laughs> you are shut down and and don't tell me about your service on Sunday and don't tell me what about how you felt God really move on you in your morning prayer meeting you don't even bring that up at the coffee table and and so it's nice to have one another to be able to come here and and share you know I really felt God last night and and you know he, he spoke to my heart and and I, and I got it I, I I saw this and and and, you know, did you hear? Did you hear this morning service about the key? You know, to connecting to our tomorrows. And did did you did you hear about oh Wednesday night service? And you know he'll do it again. And and we talk about it and we share it. And what does it do? It enriches us. It strengthens us. It helps us in our survival mode and methods as a people of God. Being connected or linked together, joined together, for the primary reason of being there for one another. United in the spirit of Christ as one body, understanding the body, staying connected and in touch with those of like precious faith is what helps to sustain you, whether you're on that mountaintop or trudging through a valley or a trial or a test in life. No matter where you are, up and down, staying connected really matters. Staying connected offers to you in such times that of strength that cannot be received or possessed by any other means. Outside of our staying connected to God and to the people of God in the end, it will only leave you empty. How can I say that? Because I grew up in a world for 22 years where I felt that exact same thing. I was connected to you if I had the drugs, the alcohol, the money, and able to party. But when I didn't have any of those things, I got disconnected. Oh, I'm really, I'm busy. I've got other things to do. And, and when you think about God, the Bible says he's as close as a brother. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Think about the people of God. They're, I really hope I've never seen it in 42 years where I'm just out for what I can get from you. But I'm glad that I'm part of the family of God. I'm glad that you're here and you are a part of us. I don't want to be having to be left to feel empty. Now, one of the primary tactics that Satan, our, our adversary, seeks to use against the child of God is none other than isolation. You know, causing... You young in the Lord or not to feel separated from the body, bringing into your life feelings of loneliness and that of your being secluded as it's you who faces the onslaught, onslaught, pardon me, of your soul's enemy as he begins to attack you. Ha <laughs> ha! Nobody cares about you. Nobody's going to help you. You say, nobody knows what I'm going through. Nobody cares and that's just nothing other than an outright lie and has no basis of reality in the life of a child of God. And you'd say, well, why is that? Because every one of us in this walk with God will go through it and faces this lie of the devil. And that's why God's given to us a way to be strengthened by our staying connected. Would you please pray with me right now? I just had an attack. Would you... I just called you up, just want to make sure, you, you know, you're still there. I just want to know that I, I'm, I'm not alone because I'm being attacked. I'm under attack. Anybody ever been under attack? You ever felt like you are just by yourself and you're up this going alone? No, you're not because I can pick up a phone. I could, I could call you to gather with, together with me in a prayer meeting. I can go to the house of God or the scheduled services or, or prayer times and I can re-plug in and know, you know what? He's a liar and the father of them all. I am not alone. See, if Satan can get you alone and apart from your life source, which I believe is God, the word of God, prayer, and the strength and encouragement we receive by being together in the spirit of unity and fellowship, all I can say to you is in your walk with God, you are in for a rough ride. If he can get you alone, get you away from, oh, who needs church? I need church. <laughs> who needs God? I need God. Who needs the word of God? I need the word of God. Sometimes you get so discouraged in your, your life. You know, some people might pick up a newspaper, go start flicking through their Facebook 
uh, app, doing whatever. Well, I'll tell you what, how about you look through the word of God? How about you pick up and talk to your brothers and sisters? I don't want to be in for a rough road, meaning, ride, pardon me, meaning I'm all by myself. I am heading this thing alone because no, you're not alone. And I believe that's why the writer, he writes in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, if you'd like to turn there, Hebrews chapter 10. The writer of the book of Hebrews writes in chapter 10, verse 25, he writes, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another and encouraging one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Well, what day? The day of the soon coming of Jesus Christ for his bride, we the church, being connected and staying connected until such a time that I don't believe is in too much the far distant future will become for all of us our saving resource. It was, you know what, having you to walk with me, an accountability partner, having you as a friend, you know, in the church and and knowing God is not the one that's going to get up and walk away from me understanding that when we come together and we worship I walk away strengthened and I feel better than maybe I walk through those doors that's going to be my saving resource that's like uh, like water when you're dying of thirst and food when you're dying of hunger I, I'm gonna I've got to get to the church what do you mean uh, service is not until Wednesday and uh, thank God for prayer on Tuesday. These are the things that will keep you and continue to keep you in your walk with God. Going to the book of Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse number 3. Matthew 24 and 3, the Bible says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now let me say this to you today. Deception is a tool that Satan uses, and he has used against humanity since the Garden of Eden. And there continues to be those who in this world who come up with maybe a new revelation or a more refined ways uh, you know, to live for God, when in fact there is only one way and one truth and one life, and that's Jesus Christ. And you'll find people say, come on, you know, you don't have to believe it that way. You don't have to do what they're telling you need to do, and it could go on and on, and there's an easier way, you know, and, and you say, you know, you're right, there is an easier way, and it's Matthew, in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13, and, and, and he kind of helps us with this, he speaks to those who come up with the apparent easier ways, and he says it like this in the second portion of the verse of 13, he says, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. But you know, here comes the scary part. As we just read in Matthew 24, as the scriptures declare that there will be wars, rumors of wars, nation rising against nations, famine, pestilence, earthquakes and divers, or many places, and all these are just the beginning of sorrows. You see, that's why staying connected is so vital to our salvation. I don't want to become unplugged. I don't want to become disconnected. I want to stay connected. It's vital to my life, to our salvation, to our life source. It was a short while ago that Brother Holland had mentioned a message that I preached some years back. The title was, I need you and you need me and we need each other. 
Now, saints of God and friends of mine today, a message such as that in light of the day and the times in which we live could never ring more true than in any other in time and concerns the times where we are in our apostolic history. You know, they talked about, uh, you look at Galatians chapter 1 where Paul writes, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another, which is not another, that some would trouble you and they would pervert the gospel of Christ. You go back to those times when, when he talked about the antichrists are already in the world today. Antichrists are among us today. And now you thrust forward from the time of the apostles and you, and you go through all of the years and the dark ages and kind of getting back to the place where we are right back to our apostolic faith. Faith, and then you continue on into the 19th century to the 20th century to where we are in the 21st century. Our apostolic heritage always is under attack and the people of God are always under attack. You need to let go, put down, walk away from, don't care, it's not necessary. And you got to go right back to that word of God, you know, and you got to say, you know what, you're not an island to yourself. I need you and, and you need me and, and we need each other. In these last days, we, I want to be, the Bible talks about how iron Iron sharpeneth iron. You know, I'm, I'm going to pass that by you. I'm going to share that with you. And, and give me an idea of what you think of that. And, and yeah, that's exactly the way I felt it was too. Instead of going off in some uh, little <coughs> history of wrong, you stay on the path of what's right. Now, the Bible says it like this. It says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you just stop for a moment and consider such a verse, as many people of God around us appear to be stepping off the path as they seek to allow worldliness or ungodliness back into their lives. As a people of every caliber, they make excuse after excuse for the reasons that they're doing so, declaring it's just tradition, you know, it's old school, and, <clears throat> and you know, living such a rigid life and a consecrated life to God, that's no longer necessary. But if you hear anything from this pulpit, I want you to hear this preacher today loud and clear. Yes, it is necessary. It's absolutely necessary to live that walk with God. Hebrews, what is it, 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men and <clears throat> and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You think about where we are and what Jesus said about there's going to come a separation of the sheep from the goats and people are going to go astray. Guess what, honey? I'm going to stay in that path. Is it in the Bible? Is that where you found it? Okay, where did you find it? Was it say that? I'm going to stay connected with the Word of God. I thank you for what you've got to say, but I'm not letting down, getting down, and going aside. The Bible says a man that puts his hand to the plow, looking back, he's not fit for the kingdom of God. I believe that's why staying connected can save you from being led astray by a false deception or even a misrepresentation of the truth. As Satan goes about deceiving people, as <coughs> people again are also deceived. Somebody told me this, and I was wondering what your thoughts are on it. And rather than just saying, well, just go ahead and do whatever that is, and, but you communicate with one another, and you say, hang on, is that in the Word of God? Is that what the Bible says? And you divert them away from their being deceived or, or led down the garden path towards maybe your own or their own demise, and possibly their eternal destruction. You think about that. No, no, is it in the Word of God? It does, we don't have to believe that anymore. No, no, you've got to plug into that word of God. That's the truth. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. He decided I didn't come to condemn the world, Jesus said, but through the words, my words, that you could be saved. The word's going to judge me in the last day. Now, Second Timothy chapter 3, if you'd like to turn there. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. The Bible says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Get off the path. No, this pastor says, stay on the path. Keep your eyes on that goal. Look up for your redemption draws nigh. Now, Luke writes the words of Jesus in the book of Luke, chapter 21. The book of Luke, chapter 21, beginning at verse 34 through 36. Talking about staying connected. Luke 21, 34 through 36, Jesus says, And take heed to yourself, lest at any time.
your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life so that that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. See, if you listen to me, church, new to the church, to this walk or not, staying connected, it's unlikely that you at any time will be able to be drawn away by a lie or any other means that the, decep the, the devil's deception. If you just stay connected, you don't get off the path and find some new revelation and, and new way to live about it, but you stay connected saying, no, that, that's not the word that that's not true what they're telling you it is a lie you need to stay connected you need to pray and if you pray and somebody says I got this revelation that the revelation ought to be in the Word of God I believe that the Word of God church is enriched with both wisdom and direction and if followed it will be what leads you all the way home the Apostle Paul and uh, Peter, pardon me, he writes a list in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1. I think it's 4 through 9. And he concludes with the words in 2 Peter 1 and 10. That's our focus today. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 10 declares, Wherefore, rather, brethren, give all diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. And to this, I would say that staying connected, being able to rightly divide the word of truth and understanding that the purpose of our living this life for Christ is a road much easier to walk upon if you can do it by being in touch with and in contact with, with those of like precious faith. Not everybody believes what the truth is. That's why Jesus' disciples came and said, why do you talk to them in parables? Why don't you just say it? Because it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, and to them it's not given. So the words that we, re we read this afternoon in our scriptural text, they speak to us about a promise from God. It goes on to saying to save yourselves from this untoward generation. But I believe that the key verse, that one that set my heart to go, was the text found in Acts chapter 2 verse 42, where the Bible declares, and that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. See, the vital link to our continuance of this apostolic truth and the faith that was once delivered to the saints is by none other means than by all of them and us today that walk this walk of faith that have stayed connected. They continued, and I thought that word hit me, continued, and the word stay came along. They stayed, they continued, and the apostles' doctrine, breaking of bread and fellowship and prayer, they continued to do that. They stayed connected, and so along comes a lie, along comes an opportunity to get off the path, and, and you know what? They would be pulled right back into line saying, no, that's not true. Don't believe that. No, this is what you need. To. Prayer is important. Yes, the word of God is rich and powerful. That's what you need to read. This is what Jesus said. It doesn't matter what they said. And they stayed connected, pardon me. They continued, continued day after day, week after week. And you know, pastor, he, he, every pastor, they get their little hobby horse. And I'm sorry, this is my hobby horse and it probably should be yours. <clears throat> but if you want to read Acts chapter 17, 11, it's not even part of my text. <clears throat> I love that verse. And these were more noble than days in Thessalonica, in that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind, but they searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. They connected to the power source. They connected to the truth. They didn't say, oh, I'm going to argue that point. No, I'm going to, no, I stayed connected. And, and with one another, we could kind of, kind of brush off one another what we feel and what we've said. And, and I tell you what, but when we stay connected, we continue to do that. We'll take this faith all the way home. Now, as around the corner, I want to say to you, to all of you really, how that in the day that you find yourself drifting from the moorings of Christ, in the day that 
in your walk, you begin to or even start distancing yourself from your brothers and sisters in Christ. As, as you leave the life source of the word of God, the need of your keeping diligent in your prayers, and you're being faithful to the house of God, this for you, if such a day arises, is going to be a day when your adversary, as the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, as a roaring lion will walk about seeking whom he may devour and that just might well become you you're not an island you're not alone you shouldn't be alone you don't need to isolate and distance yourself because that's where he begins to attack your mind and that's where the lies come after you and you're no good you're you're not you're not worth anything and nobody likes you and nobody cares about you when in fact surely they do staying connected or plugged into our life source as well as our strength that's gained by our connecting with one another and in these end times church more and more is going to be what will prove to be not just vital but a life-saving as well as a soul-saving grace as we see the day of Jesus his return drawing closer to us closer than when we first believed we preached for years he's coming back he's coming back he's coming back and now the world is taking care of that and they've taken it up Jesus is coming back prophecies being fulfilled things happening at a rapid pace and look around the world and everything we read in uh, chapter 24 of Matthew is just flying across the pages of and the different ways of communication and so it's just we've got to stay connected I want to make sure that I'm not being led astray I'm not going to get off that path Amen. <clears throat> in closing today what it is that I'm seeking I believe to impart to you today is again not being an island to yourself attempting to walk this walk of faith alone that's the worst thing you could ever do failing to use a source of strength and the purpose I believe that Jesus had come he came to this earth with a desire to build and to maintain a church and a people called by his name by, by not doing, <coughs> but by doing everything instead of what we can to connect. You see, that's the fastest way. If you don't connect, it's the fastest way for you to commit spiritual suicide. If we disconnect, then you're going to get into trouble. We disconnect. You're going to come off, the, off that garden path and be kind of led astray. If you disconnect, that's going to cause you trouble in your life. That's why I've got to have that plug in. I've got to have that bounce back. No, that's not right. That's not, what, that's not the truth. No, you need to pray. You need to trust God. We're going to be going into 21 days of prayer and fasting. And in those 21 days, of, as we gather together as a church and, and we pray and fast, it doesn't necessarily mean you've got to pray and fast those 21 days. But in that 21 days, take that time to pray and say, God, I want to stay connected. I don't know about you, they, there's a saying that goes that seven days without prayer makes one weak, W-E-A-K. You know what? <clears throat> a prayerless soul, a uh, child of God, is a careless child of God. And finally today, for years, for years, humanity as a whole has sought for and has discovered ways and means of our staying connected and removing out of the equation of our lives any dis any chance pardon me of our being secluded separated kept away from a life source that has kept the glue of our lives intact and that being god allowing us to connect with to stay connected with, with every child of god soon learns soon learns pardon me is that by staying connected with Jesus Christ is the greatest life source of all. And if you learn this art, it'll be you who'll be able to keep your eyes focused on that heavenly goal. I want to stay connected. I've got to stay connected. If you forget everything I've said this afternoon, if you just remember this, don't disconnect, but stay connected. And if you do yourself a favor... By not only hearing this message, but allowing it to resonate deep within your soul. For whether you believe it or not, you cannot. You can't. In fact, in the coming days ahead, you won't be able to make it alone without the help and of the ability of your being able to connect with God, along with you're also connecting with those brothers and sisters in Christ. And I believe that's why it is God who, for the service, had put into my spirit such a message that one day for you, for all of us, it might prove to be nothing less than a life-saving message in 
its purpose. Well, where have you been? We've missed you. You haven't been around. I haven't seen you lately. Who cares? We care. And, and if you're not here and you're, and you're kind of going away and work's taking you away, well, I want to reconnect with you. I want to get you back on track because guess what? You'll make all the money. You can do anything you want to do in this world. If you're not connected to your true life source, at the end of the day, you're going to end up lost. Would you stand together with me this afternoon? I guess to say this, my prayer for you, for all of you this day, is if you haven't already discovered it, is for you to be the one to discover the value as well as the need of our being and staying connected. First with God, through the word of God, through prayer, and by staying connected with one another as we walk this walk of faith in these end times. So I invite you today to either pray right where you are or come to this altar and to ask God to help you not only to see but to understand and to discover if you haven't already the value that's found within your staying connected. Amen. The songwriter writes a song. You're my brother. You're my sister. Take me by the hand. As long as we're together, we'll stand. There's no foe that can defeat us if we're walking side by side as long as we're together will stand. So would you stop for the next couple of moments and just pray. Would you talk to God? Will you thank God for your ability in these closing hours of time yes. to be able to stay connected? Thank you for the church and thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for that word of God which is rich and powerful. Thank you Lord today for helping me in my life not to ever get myself set aside and apart from my from the family of God from the purpose of coming and gathering together I need to pray and and I need to read your word I need to be enriched I need to be renewed every day that I live God I've got to stay connected to you would you pray would you just talk to God because sometimes I think we do get disconnected Jesus today